Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new season two of Y Team Stories. We are so excited to be back for a whole new season. Season one was full of such incredible Y Teamers from around Australia and New Zealand. So we cannot wait for a brand new season. Without further ado, we're gonna get stuck straight into episode one. And I'm not just gonna say hello, I'm gonna say a huge kia ora to our first interviewee, which is a wonderful lady by the name of Garvey Newman. So please give Garvey a little round of applause wherever you're watching this from. Garvey, hello, welcome to Y Team Stories. Before we begin, uh, I just thought if you wanted to introduce yourself, tell everyone how you got involved with Y Lead and we'll go from there. Yep, cool. Hey everyone, um, I'm Garvey, as Amy just said, and I'm from Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, I first met Y, like the Y team, Y lead kind of thing, when I was on SLC 2016. Um, I was head girl at Rangiruru Girls School in Christchurch, so I had the privilege of going over to the Gold Coast, which was pretty cool. Um, I think it was Gold Coast, or Brisbane, yeah, Bond yeah. University, right? Anyway, yeah. Um, <laughs> Queensland was all the same. It was a long guys. time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, that was amazing. I got to know them. And then in my first year of uni, uh, end of first year, I actually did a, um, a MAD summit in Dunedin. Um, and that was like with Belle and some other Y teamers from New Zealand. So that was really cool. And that was the first time I got like re-involved um, from a volunteering aspect. So yeah, that was pretty special. So yeah. And for some of our Y teamers that wouldn't have met you before, how would you describe yourself in three words? Kind, random, fun. That's, they're very appropriate. What would be the favorite thing to do where you live? Like if someone was to pop over to Christchurch just for a day, what's your favorite activity that you love doing? Good question, because I'm like a huge Christchurch advocate. Um, I love the hills. And like if I, I'm at my flat right now in town, but if I could show you out the window, the hills, they're so beautiful. It's um, good in the summer or winter. And it's just, yeah, I would say go to the Port Hills as soon as you get to Christchurch. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Alrighty, we are going to get stuck into our main kind of questions for the interview. So question number one, what is your spirit animal and why? Um, I would say a monkey because I don't know why I've always had this kind of like I've just been drawn to monkeys um, like when I had teddy bears when I was younger I say when I still have three of them um, I I had three monkeys I don't know I just kind of think monkeys are like fun when you see them like on like documentaries or even at the <laughs> zoo they're always kind of like playing jumping leaping they're really social creatures yeah um, I see them as pretty intelligent so I don't know I just I think if I was to hang out with an animal colony I, I see myself getting on with the monkey as well. Question number two, if you could have dinner with any person, dead or alive, who would it be and what would you talk about? I feel like I always wish this was like, if I could have a banquet with like a whole lot of people, because okay. honestly, like I, there's, I could just, so, like there'll be so many people, you could have like musicians and like philosophers and politicians and movie stars, all that. But I, I did think if I can get it down to one, well, kind of two, like two different situations. Right, okay. Um, so, so my one would be like, I would love to like have a catch up again with my grandma. Mm. Um, I feel like I had, I was so lucky to like grow up with her in most of my life. Um, but then like, she died about six years ago and I would love to just kind of like catch up again about, you know, just like check in. And especially because I feel like we'd be less busy now. Kind of like, you know, I'd like to have like a, actually just sit down and like, catch up so that would be cool um i feel like i couldn't pass that one up and the other one a bit random um but i'm a bit of like a political science nerd um karl marx i don't know if you like know marxism mm -hmm. um, yeah i would love to like i wouldn't understand probably what he was talking about because it would be like advanced <laughs> beyond me but um i would love to like get his views on like the state of the world today i mean he was anti-capitalist before capitalism was in its uh, you know, it's full blown state it is today. So I don't know. I would love to like kind of talk to him about like revolutions and like I don't know, just the ways that he thinks about things I find really fascinating and I would love to see how it could be applicable to today's world. Mm -hmm. Um, especially like post Cold War, you know, like just kind of how he'd view that and yeah, I just think he'd be fascinating. Mm -hmm. It'd be cool to say if I didn't What a Karl contrast. Marx. Imagine putting like your grandma and Karl Marx in the same dinner. More so. Oh, it would be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I think we'd, we'd talk on grandma's terms. We'd be talking about like 
we wouldn't be talking politics. It would, it would be like, I don't even know, the best scone recipes and all that. <laughs> um, love that. All right, next question is, if you could present a TED talk, what would it be centered around? I think um, I would theme it on like the power of caring. Um, I mean, that sounds like desperately obvious to like most of us, but I think it's not actually to a lot of people, especially like people in positions of influence and stuff. Um, I, I feel like it would have to be like a series of TED Talks on like caring in different aspects, you know, like environmental, political, mm -hmm. just day to day. But um, I don't know, I just think like, even just on the, at the most basic level, like a lot of people probably underestimate the like impact they could have on someone just through caring, you know, just like, um, and by caring, I just mean like taking time in an interaction, you know, and like showing interest in someone else's life and just like, I don't know, putting an effort. And I think that would just like, I don't know, I just feel like that, that sort of thing, if you carried that with you, it would inspire others to do the same. And then, you know, that leads to bigger change eventually. And I also think like, you know, if, um, when people make big decisions in the world, if they just actually cared about other people and took that into account, then I feel like there'd be some hugely different outcomes. So yeah, I would, I'd do some research and get some stuff on the psychology of caring, but mm. yeah, it'll be it. No, that's awesome. And it's like that ripple effect theory of, you know, when you do a kind deed for someone, they'll then go and do yeah. something as well. And it just ripples out to so many people. Yeah, for sure. Love yeah. that. All right, question number four, what is a skill that you have that you could teach someone else? Oh my goodness. Um, I mean, random skills. Like one I used to like doing is this like whistling thing. <laughs> Great. Like, the one where you like, you like your hands together. And I used to like, yo, but can you do it already? I sometimes. Whoa, you're real yeah. good. I get like the, the yeah yeah. Mine's yeah. Good on. So I used to try and teach that. You like I'd show them like how to put the hands, and then you just like yeah, it's great. I love that. Uh, next question. At Y Lead, uh, our five colors of leadership for us are number one, red, which is passion. Number two is vision, which is blue. Green is for growth. White is for integrity, and yellow is for service. And if you were to consider all those five kind of elements and aspects what would be one of those colors that is really kind of resonating in your life right now mm, i think um passion which was red i think you put those two together yeah. yeah um i feel like i don't know it's election year in new zealand it's also election year in uh the states and like as i said i'm a political science student so like that sort of thing gets me pretty excited and like really brings out uh, my opinions on things in like a kind of a passionate way um and I've just started second semester of uni and my classes are like fantastic this semester um, as they were last, but yeah, I just feel like I'm, I'm feeling really engaged at the moment, especially with like my like uni kind of stuff and like um, like social political things. So I don't know, that's cool. And yeah, I just feel like when I'm feeling passionate in those areas, it just like, I bring it home to my conversations and everything. And it's just, yeah, I enjoy that. So okay. yeah. All right, now we're moving into our fast five. And so basically, I'm just gonna give you two options and you have to say whichever one you'd rather like rapid fire, okay? Oh gosh, yeah. <clears throat> Number one, beach or forest? Beach. Okay. Number two, savory or sweet? Sweet. Number three, stand on Netflix. Do you guys have what stand in, yeah, do you have no. stand in New Zealand? Oh, okay. So Netflix. Netflix. Well, yeah, that's mm, default. Number four, road trip or plane trip? Road trip. Road and trip number, sure. number five, early riser or night owl? Early riser, even though it's not always easy. Early riser, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Gavi, in season one, we finished every interview with an open-ended question. So something about each interviewee. And we wanted to carry it on in season two because it's such an awesome way to get insights into all of our Y team and learn a little bit more. And for those of you that are just learning a little bit more about Gavi, it was pretty cool. She got to spend some time over in America at the start of this year on exchange. But when Gavi came back, she actually uh, came home with COVID. So she was in isolation for that. And we just wanted to, especially in this current climate with Victoria back in isolation 2.0, we wanted to really touch on this and 
Gabby and I were saying before this interview that for a lot of people, COVID doesn't really seem that real because we don't necessarily know anyone that's gone through it. And so we just wanted Gabby to share a little bit of her experience and, you know, provide a bit of insight and also maybe a little bit of hope for those of us that are out there. So Gabby, I'm just going to let you take it away. Thanks. Um, yeah, so as Amy said, I was studying at University of Washington in Seattle and we had to um, come home early because of like the COVID situation um, as it kind of escalated. Um, so I arrived home like symptom free and everything, but then that evening I started to like notice my breathing felt a bit different. Um, and I told my parents and they were both doctors, so that was kind of like reassuring, but they did say like, you probably got it. Um, you've been in the States, you've just gone through airports and you've got this like breathing kind of thing. Um, I got a test the next day and I had it. Um, I was already isolated luckily because like we had to, that was the rule then. Um, but yeah, it was, it was definitely like bizarre actually having it. Um, especially because in New Zealand, it, I was like number 143. It wasn't, you weren't a lot of people. So like at first I was actually kind of like, oh, I'm like, just gonna keep this to myself. Like mostly because I didn't want people to be excessively worried. Um, Cause I was like, it's not that bad. And it, I was really lucky actually. It was like pretty mild. I had like, I was really fatigued and that like lasted like a couple of months. Um, I had like muscle aches and like a few like, you know, a sore throat, but it was, it was not that bad. Um, but so yeah, at first I kind of like was like, I'll just like keep this low key. Um, but then after a while, and especially once I kind of was like recovered from it, I was like, actually, I feel like it will be useful to like tell people about this. Um, because like, first of all, like I consider myself like pretty fit and healthy and I'm young, but I still got it. Um, and you know, like I have pretty good hygiene practice, like that I still got it. Um, and I think like that was kind of a surprise, like to like a lot of people around me. I know like I bumped into one of my friends when I was out walking um, and we had a socially distant conversation. This was when I was still like in level three or four. Um, and she was saying how like she was like so surprised that it was like in our community as in like in our kind of suburb. And like, yeah, cause like, I don't know, no one really knew about it. So it was, there was this thought that it's like over there yeah. or like that it's out there, but like until you know someone it's like not real. So that was like important, I think for lot, like for me and my friends to realize like it's very much real. Um, and like also that I think there's a bit of complacency now, even that young people are like, oh, if I get it, I get it. Mm -hmm. But like, it really, the fatigue like lasts. It's, it's not, you know, like I wouldn't recommend it. It's not, yeah. Um, so like things like my, like running that I do a lot, I had to like really stop that majorly. Um, so yeah, that was like a big change. Um, and in terms of lockdown, yeah, obviously like the Victoria people like going into a second lockdown, like that, I, I understand that would be really hard. Um, so I'm really, I'm sorry to hear that you guys are that, going through that, but um, I hope that it like clears up soon and I hope there's like, it's a little bit of like unified kind of feeling between everyone. Um, I think like the first lockdown is kind of better because you don't really know what's coming. You don't know what to expect. You just like ride it out. But I know the second one, I think that would be quite hard, like knowing some of the things that you might've struggled with. Um, but I feel like for me, like there was some, there was a lot of like peacefulness and learning in lockdown. Um, we had a beautiful autumn in Christchurch and like that was really nice. Like there were like really nice sunsets daily and it was just like the schedules like slowed down. We had, you know, there was nothing on. So that was really special and like spending time with whoever you're living with is pretty cool. So I was with my parents and my younger sister. Um, and like, you know, I just think it was like a pretty unique time. So I just tried to keep that in mind and like how like this is a, a rare time to like just be with these people around me and kind of like slow down and and not worry about like you know like a lot of people try and build skills and like you know like learn a new language in lockdown or like become like the fastest marathon runner in the world or something and it's like it's just like chill and yeah so i don't know i would say like yeah hang in there i know it like it can't be easy especially going to a second lockdown but um i think like do your bit for the people around you and for yourself and then i really hope that things get better there soon so yeah Gabby, we will wrap it up here, but a huge thank you from myself and the Wiley team for not only sharing your story, but kicking off season two of Y Team Stories. So to everyone else, keep your eye out over the next few weeks. Uh, we've got 10 new episodes coming your way. We can't wait to share them with you, but a huge thank you to Gabby for all your time and wisdom. We'll catch you guys Thanks, next week. Thanks so much. Bye.